Bizarre things going down at Ewood Park as Backman Rovers making six wins out of six. And a huge portion of credit goes down to one of our old strikers. Talk about the match and more today's show. Oh, 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 oh. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review talking about the Blackburn Rovers charm game in just one second. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and get back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers really getting into the meat of the action right now of the month, the month of December, the crazy month of football. Uh, yeah, so Blackburn Rovers 2 0 winners at the end of Saturday's fixture against Charlton Athletic. And the opening goal came from one of our old boys. That's right, Leon Best. Leon Best into the back of his own net. Obviously, now Leon Best playing for Charlton Athletic. He used to steal a wage at Blackburn Rovers. One of Steve Keane's old boys, I think. He was on ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, so a little bit of just desserts there. Uh, his side goes away with no points, and he actually adds to our tally in the old... Uh, league table there. So he opened up a score in the 30th minute and Danny Graham sealed the deal with an injury time winner four minutes uh, into added time. And that win keeps Blackburn Rovers in third place. Charlton remain in sixth place. Let's take a little closer look at the match itself. Uh, it was slipping. It seemed to slip through our fingers a little bit for Blackburn Rovers. The possession was dominated by Charlton who continued to press in the second half. And if I'm honest... I thought we were going to uh, uh, let it flip through our fingers and, uh, and, and, and probably walk away with a point. But no, the big man, Danny Graham, made sure the point stayed at Ewood Park uh, with that injury time winner. As for shots, uh, Blackburn Rovers had eight. As uh, Charlton had 11. Uh, Rovers only had two on target. Charlton had five. Four corners apiece. And Blackburn were the dirtiest side with 15 fouls. Uh, this was the starting <laughs> 11 for Blackburn Rovers. Ryer in goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Smallwood, Evans got the nod, Bradley Dack, Marcus Antonison, and uh, Dominic Samuel. Obviously, the formation's not exactly true to, 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 the, to what Tony Mowbray put out there, but these are the 11 players. And, and these are my match ratings for the players. Uh, David Ryer with an 8. He did a commanding performance between the sticks overall. Uh, Naimbi got a 6, Downing got a 7, Charlie Mulgrew also got a 7, Derek Williams has an 8. Uh, Craig Conway with a 7, Small with 7, Evans with a 6, Bradley Dack with a 7, Marcus Antonison with a 6, and Dominic Samuel with a 6. They are pretty average ratings for the players. I didn't think we were that uh, impressive at home, which just seems to be a, re a reoccurring theme for Blackburn Rovers at the moment. We, we seem to have our better performances away from Ewood Park. And we, be, we need to bring our home form up to the standard of our away form. You know, we are going away uh, uh, on our away days, so to speak, and, and putting in commanding performances and and seem to uh, seem to play much, with much more freedom uh, away from Ewood Park. I don't know why that is. But usually sides uh, usually bank on their home fixtures for their free points. And right now, Rovers, they are still winning games. It's just not as comfortable and it's not as demanding as I feel they should be. Let's take a look at the chart on 11. Amos was in goal. Solly, Consa, Pierce, De Silva, Forska Kaski, Aribo, Marshall, Clark, Reeves... And McGuinness. Um, so it was a cracking result, to be honest. We'll be a top six side. Uh, three points in the back for Blackburn Rovers. And now we kick on to the next one, which is an away match to Strugglers Northampton. And that's a game that we shouldn't take lightly. Uh, I'm hoping, again, we can continue where we, we left off and make it win number seven out of seven. You know, when you look at the table, you see Northampton in 20th spot. You think it's an easy three points, but there's no easy three points in in League One. To be honest with you, sometimes when you when you when you expect three points, you go you walk away with nothing, and that's a, a big example of that. Would be AFC Wimbledon, who are also where are they in the table? They are struggling, 23rd in the table. You know, and they bank they walked away with three points at Ewood Park. So we can't uh, expect to win at Northampton. Do I think they will? Well, you have to wait and see on my preview, which will be midweek. But anyway, that's what I think about the match. What did the gap have to think about the match? Let's take a listen to what he had to say after the final whistle. Yeah, it was tough. They asked lots of questions of us. I thought, um, thought we probably deserved more from the first 45 minutes than we got. Um, and I'm not sure if they weren't 1-0 down, they'd have been as adventurous and pushed on as much. It, um, you know, it's, it's football. If we'd have been 1-0 down, I'm sure we'd been the team 
pressing and trying to break them down to get an equaliser. But um, credit to them, they had a go. I think brilliant resilience from our team, brilliant team spirit, brilliant togetherness with the crowd for spells when they got involved with the point of driving the team on to keep the clean sheet. Um, and you know, great to finish as we did with a with a second goal. I think it looks a bit unfair on them 2 0 defeat as if it's routine. It's, um, good, but they're a good team. We prepared slightly different from what we've been doing for every other team, and uh, and I think we needed to because they showed what a good side they were. And it wasn't a day really for a blanket press on over the pitch because uh, they could have played through us and got to our back line a bit easier. But um, yeah, we got the job done. That's all that matters. Good. The team have to know that that's there. The days that we need it. You know, we've um, got some big tests coming up and it's going to be difficult to play four games in I don't know 10-12 days um, at the intensity that we're asking them to play at and so sometimes they might have to sit behind the ball let the opposition have it block off the areas and try and nick it and counter attack it you can't always play on the front foot and um, as long as we keep learning and develop ways of, of winning football matches then we'll be okay oh, listen you want to be dominant you want to you want to play on the front foot you want to be asking questions of teams you want to create lots of chances and yet it, there's lots of ways to win the win, win games you know Leicester City won the Premier League playing on the counter-attack and, and lots of men behind the ball and yet Man City look like they're going to win the Premier League with total domination of the ball there's lots of ways to be winners I think for us over the course of this game these 46 games we have to sometimes be really dominant sometimes be massive blanket press and other times we have to find a different way and sit and show some resilience and counter-attack so you know, without trying to be too clever it was a bit of a bit of everything to do I, I think um, but we'd prepared for that in two days last two days team bought into it knew that they were going to put some pressure on us and we had to be resilient and um, and that's why it, it's good for the team that they they enjoyed the victory because they knew that's what sort of game it was going to be yeah because you, I don't, I'm not sure you can win 4-2 every week you know or 3-2 whatever the last one was it's um, there's going to be some games where you have to win 1-0 if you're going to win leagues or, or be right at the top or try and get promotion there's got to be the 1-0 wins and we've had some of them early season that was just a bit uncomfortable winning 1-0 the way we were doing it and um, I'd rather play more high pressing game and, and playing forward quicker and more more um, cut and thrust to the team uh, which is what we've been doing but when you play against good sides you have to you have to tinker with that you can't play too much on the front foot because good teams pass through you and round you and over you and into the strikers very quickly and and you need to protect them at some stage yeah outstanding you know I, I feel a big goal is if you know I've always said about my goalies that's what they get paid for to save shots and catch crosses but um, we to say we played against a decent team I don't I don't think I, I think what can I think of two what I'd call proper saves and then some routine saves but some great catches and takes when we might have been under pressure because mainly what changed the game was their physicality coming on the pitch really and going back to front at the, at the, um, at the end of the first half um, I know they played better football as the game went on and got it wide and got it in our box and, but Ray came to the fore um, yeah he, he does what I expect my goalie to do that's how I like my goalies to be positive, to be on the front foot, to distribute the ball because I thought that was really good as well today, distributing the ball, um, taking crosses, helping his defence and, and of course making saves but you know me and you could go in the goal and make the odd save so um, I, don't, I don't praise him too much for making saves, that's what he gets paid for. I think it was, it was just reward for the team's effort really and bottom line when the team's listen, if we'd have been 1-0 down I'm pretty sure the game would have been the same with, with us attacking like that really and um, it's very difficult as we saw at the end of last season I remember Derby game out here and in Wigan game out here we were hanging on protecting 1-0s and got there in the end and and today they, they over committed lots of men they played man for man at the back as you have to and then we broke away and we scored a second goal and finished the match it's football and yet they're a decent team and as they're showing they're in the top six and winning some games and so um, but today we got the job done. Moving on, what did the players and what did the fans have to say on social media? Let's take a look around. Marcus and Thompson said pretty short and sweet six and six and uh, quite a few little emojis in there. Dominic Samuel also pretty short and sweet six and six. Let's keep this up. Derek Williams great win today. Whole team was brilliant. Fans to six in six. Ryan Nimby also going with a six in six. Great win today. Three important points and a clean sheet. David Raya also said very important win today. Six in a row and back to clean sheets. Happy to get man of the match. Fair play to you. 
True Rovers said, a big win that for Rovers against a decent chance side. Superb performance from David Raya. Six wins in a row and hashtag in Mowbray we trust. At Bex BRFC said, the relief when that goal went in. And David Raya running the length of the pitch to celebrate. Hard three points, keep it up Rovers. Andy Neal, 74, said, great to see Rovers team spirit after the second goal today. And a bit, a bit of a muscle arm there. Hashtag Rovers. Uh, Jay Noble, 20987. Said, amazing lads, simply amazing. Proud of how far the side has come. Hashtag Rovers. Matthew Grimshaw said on Twitter, keep the wins coming, Rovers. E I E I O. Northern Rover in there with, with a tweet. Make that six in a row. Not the best performances, but all that matters is another win. Loving this run. Andrew Hartley also on Twitter said, those seeds at the end. Awesome. Raya sprinting the leg of the pitch. There goes my phone. Hashtag Team Spirit. Anthony Hodgkinson said, get in, Rovers. Six on the bounce. Hashtag Rovers. Hashtag winning. Now on Facebook, other people were chipping in with their points of view. Got to keep the wins going with the rest of the pack winning. We'll talk more about that in just one second. Stuart Franklin said, get in. That's a great win for us. Keep the run going. Ben Knight, also on Facebook, said, best goalkeeping display I've seen in many a year at Ewood today by Raya. Top notch. Shashkam Sharma said, best loves Blackman so much that he scores for us. Dean King, also on the same theme, said, Liam Best paying back a fraction of the money he trousered here because, well, it's the time of year for giving. Much, I agree with you, 100% there, Dino. Uh, Jack Farmworth, so he had a lot to say after the match, so much so he gets his own page here. Pros, Leon Best scoring was absolutely poetic. I agree. Uh, good work rate right from the nut. Meh, not so much. Graham bagging another. Yep, it's always great to see Danny Graham scoring. Uh, team spirit after the second. Even Raya coming up. Much, much agreed there. So the, the atmosphere around the ground and, and around the training facilities and all that kind of stuff seems to be top notch. Um, and long may it continue. This is the stuff that we need. We need, we need the, the morale to be super high. We need to see the guys gelling together as a team, not as individuals. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a second. Raya's best performance? Question mark. Possibly, possibly. Thomason continues to surprise me. We may have a great player in the making. And it's as for Jack Farmworth's cons. Missed way too many sitters in the first half. I agree. Conway needs to learn he is a winger and pass the ball. I, oh, I, I, I had a little rage myself watching it on iFollow. Uh, there was a couple of instances where he went for goal um, when he should have set somebody up. Anyway, missed Whittingham in the middle. Uh, agree. I think I think uh, Evans didn't have a great game. Parking the bus in the last 15 minutes. Double question mark. Overall, messy win, but a win is a win, and that's true. You know, we we can't win them all perfectly. We can't all we can't thrash everybody, and we haven't really done too many thrashings anyway. But the as long as we're winning, that's all that matters. We're going to win down and dirty. Uh, as long as we get the three points and climb up that table, and and with the with the other two top the top two sides winning. Um, it was essential that we kept up the pace and, uh, and and stopped them from breaking apart. And speaking of that, let's take a look at around the grounds and see what else <laughs> happened this weekend. <laughs> Gillingham, 4-1 winners of a Bristol Rovers, but they're one of the ones that mattered the most to us. Shrewsbury beating Gary Bowyer's Blackpool 1-0. Wigan, where are they? They're in here somewhere. 4-0 winners away from home against AFC Wimbledon. That's how it's done. We should have trousered them when... Uh, uh, someone said trousers now, it's in the back of my mind. Uh, but yeah, we should have trousered them uh, when, when they came to Ewood Park. Uh, next next weekend's opponents, Northampton, 2-1 winners in a game that seemed to be uh, pretty pretty exciting with uh, multiple red cards. Uh, Bradford also winning, keeping up the pace, beating South End out there. Gaff, Char, Rotherham only managed a draw. There's a lot of red cards dotted about in League One. Who else is in there? Scumthorpe. I think they picked up a win as well. No, they picked up a draw as well. 2-2 against MK Dons. Fleetwood against Peterborough. That game is tomorrow. But if the season ended today, we'd be in the lottery. That is the playoffs. And that is something that I do not want to experience. We cannot... Uh, uh, obviously, I prefer playoffs than nothing. My goal right now is to see Rovers in those top two positions and preferably preferably before the end of the calendar year before the FA Cup match against Hull City I would love it to see Blackburn Rovers in the top two um, and then next season transfer window opens 
A lot of craziness might go on. We might lose a couple of players. We might gain a few players. Uh, Chapman hopefully will return uh, bigger and better and buzzing than ever. And, uh, and then and, and hopefully that will good give us an extra few exciting creative options off the bench. Because right now our bench does look a little stagnant. It doesn't have that much flair. Um, you know, we are playing our most creative and flary kind of player. And that is Bradley Dak. Um, obviously, it's, it's good to have Danny Graham coming off the bench. Uh, but yeah, maybe maybe one or two new additions. Uh, but in order for that to happen, there might be one or two out the door. But anyway, uh, enough about that. But that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll give you a bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I also want to give a shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, details are in the description below. It's a great opportunity for you guys to chat with fellow Rovers fans from around the world or even just down the road. Uh, talk about cracking results such as this uh, home performance. Well, it's not much of a cracking performance, but a cracking result. And also talk about um, you know stuff from yesteryear, maybe in the old SAS and all that kind of jazz. If you want to do that, details are in the description below. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook if you want to keep up to date with me on the go. Um, massive result. We've got to just keep on winning. Um, there was also, I did, I thought I was going to include it, but I didn't. But there's some guys out there who said if Rovers win 10 on the spin, he's going to get Tony Mowbray tattooed on his backside. Now, come on. That is, if that's an incentive for you, Rovers, get out there. Stick four more wins on the, on the bounce so that dude can get Tony Mowbray tattooed on his ass. That would be phenomenal. Anyway. Uh, enough about that. Next time you'll hear me, it will be the build-up to the Northampton game, which will probably be midweek. So stay tuned for that bad boy. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.